Welcome to the first part of the TIBCO Spotfire Administration Orientation. In this presentation, I'll discuss the basics of Spotfire architecture, what the options are for authenticating with Spotfire, how Spotfire can connect to enterprise data, and the other Spotfire server functions. The Spotfire server is the heart of every Spotfire implementation. The server provides five main functions. It authenticates and authorizes Spotfire users with the help of the Spotfire user directory. Its information services serve as the gateway to some of the supported data sources. We'll talk more about the options for accessing data later in this presentation. It provides access to a server-based store of analyses called the Spotfire library. It gathers analyzable information on server events, client actions, and server performance through the action logs and system monitoring function. And lastly, it distributes updates to the Spotfire Analyst client through its deployment services. Speaking of clients, let's talk about the various ways that users can connect to Spotfire. First off, we have Spotfire Analyst, formerly known as Spotfire Professional. Spotfire Analyst is installed on enterprise users' local computers and is a fully featured client for working with data sources and creating complex analyses. We also have a browser-based client with two licensing options, consumer or business author. With the consumer license, users can view interactive analyses. With the business author license, they can also create and edit simple analyses. Browser-based users connect through the web player server. The web player server then connects to the Spotfire server, acting as a client to retrieve the analyses and render them in HTML and JavaScript for the browser. For mobile users, we have an app for iPads, which allows them to view interactive analyses, again, through the web player server. You may have also heard another client mentioned, Spotfire Desktop. Spotfire Desktop is a standalone version of Spotfire Analyst built for individual, non-enterprise users who do not have access to a Spotfire server. In an enterprise implementation of Spotfire, administrators typically set up a cluster of Spotfire servers to support the necessary workload and provide server failover. In this case, clients access Spotfire through a load balancer. In the same fashion, you can also have a cluster of web player servers with a load balancer. Both Spotfire Server and Web Player Server can use any load balancer that supports session affinity, otherwise known as sticky sessions. There are two ways organizations can implement Spotfire, with a traditional on-premise installation or through our Spotfire Cloud Enterprise offering. Cloud Enterprise gives organizations a dedicated cloud environment with a complete deployment of the Spotfire platform. I'll give you a quick overview of the differences between an on-premise implementation and Cloud Enterprise now, and in a few slides, we'll have a look at Cloud Enterprise in more technical detail. I'll also mention variations for Cloud Enterprise as needed when I cover authentication and connecting to data. The installation type for on-premise is, of course, a traditional setup where Spotfire is installed on the organization's own servers. Cloud Enterprise is a platform-as-a-service offering. One of the biggest advantages of Cloud Enterprise is the time it takes to provision a new implementation, three to five days versus two to six months for on-premise. On-premise customers perform upgrades themselves on their own schedule. Cloud Enterprise environments are upgraded automatically by Spotfire with the latest versions and the latest patches. Lastly, all Cloud Enterprise implementations use the same best practices architecture and have access to the standard client features. On-premise customers are able to customize their Spotfire architecture and add custom client features using the Spotfire API. Let's get into a little more technical detail about the Spotfire server. The server itself is a web application that runs inside a bundled Apache Tomcat server. Clients communicate with the server by HTTP or HTTPS. Spotfire server installers are available for Windows, Solaris, Red Hat Linux, and SUSE Linux. The server requires access to a database. This database stores Spotfire metadata, including the user directory and the library. The supported database types are Oracle 10G or 11G and Microsoft SQL Server. Remember that the Spotfire database is separate from the enterprise data sources used for analysis. We'll talk about connecting to enterprise data later in this presentation. For detailed and up-to-date information on the supported operating systems and database types, see the Spotfire Server System Requirements webpage. You can pause this video and click on the link to open this page. Web Player Server is a web application that runs under Microsoft Internet Information Services, or IIS. As previously discussed, Web Player Server acts as a client of the Spotfire Server, communicating with it by HTTP or HTTPS. 
At this time, WebPlayer Server can be installed on Windows Server 2012 or Windows Server 2008. It also requires version 4.5 of the Microsoft.NET framework. You can visit the Spotfire System Requirements page for current information on the supported environments and required software. Each customer using our Cloud Enterprise offering is given a single tenant environment hosted on Amazon Web Services in what Amazon calls a Virtual Private Cloud, or VPC. Nothing is shared between environments. Clients connect to a load balancer in a public subnet by HTTPS. The rest of the Spotfire implementation is kept in a private subnet that is completely inaccessible to anyone but Spotfire administrators. Cloud Enterprise environments include Spotfire Server, Web Player Server, Automation Services, Statistic Services, and Advanced Data Services. We'll talk more about those products in Part 2 of this orientation. Connections are made to enterprise data using IPsec tunnels to ensure data security. Because Cloud Enterprise implementations exist outside of an organization's firewall, customers have the opportunity to easily collaborate with partner organizations, such as suppliers or retailers, on data analysis. Partners can be given the ability to view certain analyses through Spotfire Consumer, and connections to partner data can be added to the implementation. In this section, we'll have a closer look at the options you have for configuring authentication and authorization in a Spotfire environment. In case you're not familiar with these terms, here's a quick explanation. When users log into a server, there are two things that happen before they get access. The first is authentication. Authentication is the process of validating users' identities. Do we know who a user is? Once we are confident users are who they say they are, we move on to authorization. Authorizing users determines what their access rights are within a system. In other words, what they're allowed to do. Your options for authentication in Spotfire depend on which client is being used. Spotfire Analyst users can authenticate with the Spotfire server either by using a username and password or through single sign-on. If a username and password is used, it can be checked against the internal Spotfire user directory, a custom Java authentication and authorization service module, or the most common option, an external LDAP directory. Spotfire has built-in support for Microsoft Active Directory and the Directory Server product family, which includes Oracle Directory Server, Sun Java Directory Server, and Sun One Directory Server. Other LDAP servers can also be used. For single sign-on, Spotfire supports NTLM, Kerberos, and X509 certificates. Our Cloud Enterprise offering is configured to be able to use the Spotfire user directory or an external LDAP server immediately. With some assistance from our professional services group, Cloud Enterprise customers can also use any of the other methods. Web clients log into the Web Player server, which then passes their authentication through to the Spotfire server. Here are the four basic options for authentication. The first is using a username and password. The user's credentials are passed along to the Spotfire server, which verifies them the same way it's configured to verify Spotfire Analyst users. This is the default authentication method. The second option is integrated Windows authentication. In this case, users who have logged into the appropriate Windows domain will not be prompted for a username and password. Their Windows credentials will be passed along automatically to the Web Player server and the Spotfire server. Third, you can use X509 certificates. With this option, when users access the Web Player server, they are automatically logged on using a client certificate stored on their local machine. The certificate is then passed to the Spotfire server, which must be configured to be able to authenticate client certificates. Lastly, you can allow all users anonymous access to the Web Player server. In that case, a pre configured Spotfire user identity is used to authenticate with the Spotfire server. All web users will appear to be the same single user on the Spotfire server. Keep in mind that this is a simplified view of the options. For more information, see the Spotfire Web Player Installation and Configuration Manual, Pre Installation Planning, Authentication Alternatives. Authentication methods for the iPad app are limited to username and password or integrated Windows authentication using NTLM. Regardless of how the Spotfire clients were authenticated, the process of authorization is the same. The Spotfire server checks the Spotfire user directory to determine users' privileges, which control which functions and analyses they can access within Spotfire. Optionally, the user and group accounts in the Spotfire user directory can be configured to be synchronized from an external LDAP directory. Spotfire supports the same LDAP service for directory synchronization as it does for authentication. Now let's have a look at the various ways Spotfire can connect to enterprise data. 
The basic Spotfire environment provides three ways for clients to connect to data, opening a local file, using a native Spotfire connector, or connecting through the information services function of the Spotfire server. Analysts can combine data from multiple sources in a single Spotfire analysis. Cloud Enterprise customers can use all the same data sources and connection methods as we support in on-premise installations, although our professional services group may need to be involved in order to set up secure connections. We'll talk about each of these three methods in more depth on the following slides. Spotfire Analyst users can open any file that can be accessed from their local machine or network for analysis. Business Author users can upload files to the Web Player server to use in their analyses. These are some of the file types that Spotfire supports. Microsoft Excel workbooks, text files with comma-separated values, Microsoft Access databases, and SAS data files. For the full list, see the Spotfire data sources page. As before, you can pause this video and click on the link to visit this page. Spotfire native connectors provide a mechanism for Spotfire clients to make a direct connection with enterprise data. Analysts can choose to load the entire raw data set in the memory of the client or only retrieve aggregated results and make new queries as needed for more detail. Spotfire has a long list of native connectors, with more being added with every release. Our current offerings include connectors for Apache Hive, Cloudera Impala, Hortonworks Data Platform, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle and Oracle Exadata, Pivotal, PostgreSQL, Teradata and Teradata Aster, SAP BW, and SAP HANA. For a detailed up-to-date list, see the Spotfire Data Connector System Requirements page. Using the Spotfire server's information services is another option for connecting to enterprise data. In this case, the Spotfire server makes connections to data sources on the client's behalf using information links saved in the Spotfire library. The raw data sets are loaded into the server's memory. The data sources available out of the box are Oracle, Microsoft SQL Server, Teradata, Sybase, SAS Share, MySQL, and DB2. On-premise customers can also add custom JDBC source types. For the list of data sources and more details on how to configure them, see the Spotfire Server Installation and Configuration Manual and have a look at the Data Source Templates section of the Advanced Procedures chapter. Along with the three methods for accessing data that Spotfire provides out of the box, organizations can also implement an add-on product called Spotfire Advanced Data Services, or ADS. In an environment that includes ADS, clients can use a native connector or information services to connect to an ADS server. ADS then connects to the data source and returns the required data to Spotfire. Looking behind the scenes, ADS is actually an implementation of a third-party product called Cisco Information Server formerly known as Composite Information Server. ADS offers the ability to create complex data models and connect to data sources that Spotfire doesn't currently support. ADS can connect to dozens of data source types, including web services, Salesforce, Cloudera CDH4, XML files, Siebel, and Informix. For the full list, look for the latest Cisco Information Server datasheet on Cisco's data virtualization site. Once data has been brought into Spotfire, there are a number of options for how it is handled. The default option is for data tables to be linked to the original source. The data will be reloaded automatically when the analysis is opened, which requires all viewers to have access to the data source. Alternatively, data that was loaded in the memory of the Spotfire client or server can be embedded in the analysis. In this case, the data will not be reloaded when the analysis is opened. Viewers can choose to refresh the data manually if they have access to the data source. Lastly, all or part of the dataset can be saved to the Spotfire library or exported as a file for use in other analyses. You can also save the entire analysis, of course. Analysts can select different options for the various data tables in an analysis. So far in this presentation, I've talked in detail about two of the functions of the Spotfire server, authentication and information services. I'll now briefly discuss the other functions I mentioned earlier, deployment services, the Spotfire library, and the action logs and system monitoring feature. The deployment services function helps administrators keep Spotfire analyst clients up to date. The Spotfire server hosts the current set of packages that make up the Spotfire analyst client, along with a manifest listing them. When analyst users log in, their local manifest is checked against the server manifest. If their clients are out of date, users are prompted to accept an update. 
Administrators can also choose to force particular deployments, in which case users will not see a prompt and their clients will be updated automatically. Deployment services can be used to add new client packages, update existing ones to a newer or older version, or even remove packages. Administrators can create multiple deployment areas, such as production and staging. This allows administrators to test new deployments before rolling them out to the entire client base or maintain different deployments for different groups of users. The deployment services function is also used to keep the web player server up to date. As mentioned earlier, the Spotfire database contains the Spotfire library. The library is accessible to Spotfire analyst, browser, and mobile users through the Spotfire server, allowing them to easily share and reuse their work. It stores Spotfire analyses, Spotfire data files, custom Spotfire data functions, information links, shared connections created with Spotfire native connectors, and visualization color schemes. The library is organized into hierarchical folders, which are also used to control access to folder content. The Action Logs and System Monitoring feature helps administrators keep an eye on the health of their Spotfire implementation. The action logs collect information about system events that is sent through a web service from Spotfire Analyst, Automation Services, and Web Player Server to the Spotfire server. These event logs, along with those from the Spotfire server itself, can be saved either to files or in a database. System monitoring takes periodic snapshots of key metrics on the Spotfire server and Web Player server and stores this information in the same location as the action logs. The logs can then be analyzed in Spotfire. Administrators have many options for how to configure this feature, including which events and system statistics should be logged, from which hosts logging information will be collected, and how the logs are pruned or archived. This feature is disabled by default to avoid logs accumulating without administrator oversight. This concludes the first part of our Spotfire administration orientation, which covered the basics of Spotfire architecture. In the second presentation, I'll talk about the other TIBCO products you can add to enhance the Spotfire implementation. For more detail on the topics in this presentation, please see the following courses. SP301, TIBCO Spotfire Administration Essentials 1. SP302, TIBCO Spotfire Administration Essentials 2. SP311, TIBCO Spotfire Information Services. And SP312, TIBCO Spotfire Connecting to Big Data.